today in 2018, the Muslims of India stand in a much worse position than they did in 1857 or in 1947. In 1857, there was a claim, Vienna claim, especially of Muslims, literatures, poets, <coughs> academics in the entire North India and even in the South. In 1947, there were the remnants of leaders of the Muslim League who betrayed the Muslims very swiftly. Chaudhry Khalid was about to take an oath of allegiance to the Indian flag and decamped in a Burka. So did Hussein Imam and Zainish Lai. What is the status today? They are totally demoralized. In 1947, there was Jawaharlal Nehru to look up to. And I remember in the 1950 general election, the slogan which ran in the Muslim areas, our young student and I used to attend some of the letters, Jawaharlal Nehru to Hat Mazdoot Karo. The truth was that he was virtually in a minor. You would find him in Dr. S. Gopal That in the cabinet, he had very little support. Parik, Maulana Azad, Rafi Ahmad Kedwai, or two others. The bulk, Tadavalada Patel, Rajendra Prasad, and others. And the, he wrote Goyal Akhand. All the major chief ministers were hostile ministers. Dred Shankar Shukla, B.C. Roy, Koraji Desai was an overbearing understanding of B.G. Khair. Govindala Pant, the father of the Ayodhya tragedy. All of them. And Pandit Nehru wrote to him as late as that in I can't enter you. you, you UP now, I think a stage there. Today they are demoralized. They are confused. They have no leadership. And they feel wrong and betrayed. Leaderless, educationally, they are backward. There is a rampant discrimination in the services, in education, and in housing. People like Shamana, Azmi and others who are not too forthcoming on Muslim issues. I was, as I said, not too forthcoming. They have to suffer. Police record is abysmal. I saw Mr. Vibhuti Narayan Raya here who has done noble work on the Hashimpura massacre. In 1857, there was a British who could look up to. In 1947, there was Zawala Nehru and for some time Gandhi. And there were remnants of the old congressmen who believed in secular values. Today, the membership, Muslim membership of the Lok Sabha has sunk to an all time low. 22. The Prime Minister took oath at his first speech in the Lok Sabha. He referred to a thousand years of slavery, which is the ISS line. It was 200 years of slavery at the British. It was the so called Muslim group. Mind you, as the, as the historian Dominic Akhara said, they were not Muslims. There were Prashads, there were Mughals of Asatulation, and the Hindus of the time did not regard them as Muslim except incidentally. Anyway, in 1947 they came a great victory. The Lahore Resolution, second part said, advocates effective mandatory safeguards for the minorities in both India and Pakistan. But in 1947, Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah said to take accomplish Pakistan and prepare to smash the
the Muslims in the rest of India. Smack, as if we were his property to barter or smack. This was a Kalsu in Agnitya Diva. You'll find it in Jamiluddin and Anas' words. When 1947 came, there was no agreement or minority at all. They choose three plans on partnership, they never lie on minorities. We were non existent. So, on the 22nd July, this is day form, and Kaizan met good Muslim leaders, the only record of his exposition of the Muslim problem in India after partition. <coughs> he told the Kurgis, don't pick up small fights. Be educationally advanced, economically. You will have to pass through ordeals. He knew that. You will have to go through a lot of trouble. But I'm sure, and he made repeated references to God, and who is devoted, he was not too notable. Anyway, there was one glimmer of hope. Sir Abdullah Harun, the Muslim League's last paragraph, authorized the framing of a scheme which provided finally for the resumption of sovereign powers. And Ambedkar was the only one to pick on the word finally and say, this envisages an interim censor. <coughs> they set up a committee to draft the scheme. And such was the bankruptcy of the Congress leadership that they never took Jira at the word and said, please answer the following question. As Ambedkar wrote his book, Pakistan or Partition of India, Gandhi filtered away the opportunity by asking him to define Muslims, ask him to define uh, what a majority is, instead of asking pointed questions on Lahore resolution. Anyway, the Harun report said we must have a coordinating agency between the two parties. And he specifically mentioned Indian Muslims. In those days, he said Hindustan and Pakistan. <coughs> Nothing came. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. <coughs> so, they came this partition and Kaidazan said the Muslim minorities on both sides should be loyal and he told the Kurgi Muslims that your fate will depend on India-Pakistan relations. Incidentally, that was also Jawaharlal and Nehru's thesis. So Indian Muslims became hostages to the relations between India and Pakistan. In December 47, the All India Muslim League met in Karachi. And for the first time in his life, Jinnah was questioned. What about us? You have not read the resolution carefully. Actually, they had read the resolution carefully, but for such as they all. However, every single Muslim League leader of North India said, We don't want a Muslim League in India. But Kadazim and Yaqat Ali and Abdullah Bishra said they will be lost to Islam. So we must have a Muslim League, otherwise they will go for Maulana Azad. As a matter of fact, in the after partition, it was the Congress Muslims who came to the aid. And they acted as mediators between the powers that be and the Muslim community. Maulana Azad and Rafi Ahmad Kedwar particularly. There was a very independent minded Muslim, a wise man who was one of the tallest leaders in the Muslim League, now Muhammad Ismail of Mirat. But Kaidyazim wanted a yes man. So he preferred Chaudhi Khalif al A youth military secretary wrote a book in which he said, I saw 
not sat seated or forlorn on a bench in the Rashtrapati, in the Governor General's house. He said, Nawab Sahib, aren't you going to Pakistan? He said, why should I? This is my country, I live here. He had cousins. And Jira is on record saying, that man will say now he's talking sense. There was never any, they regarded each other, but Nawab Sahib had an old mind. Unfortunately, Kai Dazan selected Chaudhi Khalik Zaman. And thereby I accepted Chaudhi Khalik Zaman under pressure here. He issued a statement supporting the Indian case of Kashmir. Next time he went to Karachi, he, as he was waiting for Mahmud Ali Jira to enter the hall, there comes the Kai Dazan with a paper in his hand, showed him the statement. He said, Sir, I am an Indian. He said, yes, it is harmless in our way. Next thing Khalid Zaman did was to put on a burqa and leave within months. This is what happened to Muslims. Zedek, Lari, Hussain Imam, they were leaders. Now, a Muslim league was imposed on Muslims and a mouse was appointed the leader. Muhammad Ismail, of Madras was not even a member of the League Working Committee. And he made himself Khayda Milla. Now this man prospered. Thanks to a safety man in Kerala, said Bhavati Thanga. And that is how the Muslim League came up. The point is, Khaydazam had said very sensibly in 1937, safeguards alone are not enough. You must have a share in power. That is it. Same card, al -Nazir. I'll give the exact date, 5th February 1938. After partition, Surwardi threw up a charter. Nehru was in favor, charter of minority rights. Unfortunately, Gandhi wrote some nasty comments about Jinnah in the margin. Khalid was the man, showed it to Jinnah. And then realizing the mirror, took it back. And Jina said, I want that copy. Khalifa <coughs> Zaman said, I have lost it. So Jina said, it's a pity you have lost it. But this is how it felt. But what could the charter have done? I am coming to that central point. The mere legal constitutional safeguards are not enough. Jina was right in 37, 38. All his life, he wanted Muslims to be in the national movement. Main Street have a share in the power. Paper, these pay safeguards can be paper safeguards. However, Patil then said, put forward in the Constituent Assembly the advisory committee on uh, report on minorities of which he was chairman and which provided for reservation of seats for Muslims. In 1949, he withdrew it, and in my opinion, very rightly. He said the conditions are changed, and he delivered a very sensible speech. He said, do you want to have your own faithful men selected, or you want a share in power? The Muslims who will be elected by separate electorates will be in a minority. They will never be able to fall join the ministry. You don't want to share power? I'm a friend, I'm telling you. This is no good. Reservation is no good. I want to digress here, from here. In 1994, a Muslim leader of India accused those leaders of betrayal for abandoning them. That shows that even as late as 1994, that mentality hadn't gone. Why Mahol Badal Gaya? Sadar Patel was sensible in 47, but 49 he said, Nay Jose, you couldn't sell it to the Congress movement, and it was unwise. As Ambedkar said, isolation is the worst thing that can happen to a minority. By separate electorates, David Ki Bajit Badal Gaya. In joint electorates, <coughs> The Hindu will seek Muslim votes and the Muslim will seek Hindu votes. I'll be honest. I happened to be in the States in 1964 when young 
students went south and got the black register. Papers reported that a Ku Klux man who began moderating the position to win the votes of the blacks. George Electric is a boom. However, what happened is that for some time there was a complete silence on the minor blacks and the curve turned in February 61 with the Jabalpur rash, February 1961. The, until then, strangely enough, and that coincided with the formation of the Jansa and the rise of the RSS. Jabalpur rash, this is an official document published in the Senegal Conference of the National Integration Council around middle of June 1948. They said that this is the position. The position was that Muslims could not even meet to seek redress for their wrongs. Funnily enough, there was a meeting at the height of the riots in Sambalpur. They passed a resolution. The resolution was not for protection or compensation. The resolution was to send a telegram to the UN Security Council supporting India's case of Kashmir. So the Kashmir issue became <coughs> and still is a loyalty test of Muslims. By that test, of course, I am a traitor. But I don't believe that my loyalty is to be judged. I am a good Indian precisely because I believe it is not in the national interest to keep this dispute hanging around or for that matter, but the native of China. At this time, Dr. Sayyid Mahmood, an old time, I hate the word nationalist Muslim, I mean they would also use the word nationalist Hindu. Dr. Sayyid Mahmood had in a convention, and I remember very well, I'm old enough to recall, the Congress Working Committee criticized it, <coughs> excuse me, Congress Working Committee criticized it, the press raved against it, he included congressmen. Then in 1964, he set up All India Muslim Majlisle Mushawar. I mentioned oh, I was not and I'm still not a, anybody, but Dr. Sahib Babu, with his affection, invited me to join. I said, Dr. Sahib, I'll join immediately. Or what condition? You open the doors to the non-Muslims. Because it is my belief that every act of discrimination against an Indian on ground of religion, race, colour, sex, or whatever, is an Indian lapse from Indian ideals. It's a matter for all Indians. And I'll come to it when I give concrete suggestions. He said, Uto Mere Baski Bhakti. You know the pause that Mushawara uh, took. Change came when the last few years they, they wanted funds to set up a big building. I asked one of them, I said, Kya karo again? What will you do with the building? You, what you just can't do? After Indian char hai, wo, wo, mil sakte kisi hall mein. However, nothing happened. And the test came in Babri Masjid. The best research of Babri Mandir has been done by non-Muslims. Nilandan Bhattacharya, Romila Thapar, name them. Only after Ali Sahib of Ali did some work. And even that doesn't compare it. The Muslims set up action committees comprising Muslims alone. Now for God's sake, that mosque was covered by the act of 1958 as an ancient monument. This was a time for statesmanship and Muslims should have said we will not we will organize every secular minded person who wants to protect them. Mr. Shahbadi had done research, I remember I was in touch with him then, that the Chabutra, but that's a proposal he should have felt when the thing had reached the height. He immediately rushed to Rajiv Gandhi and showed it to him. It fell flat. Then came another statement 
If there's a temple beneath, I will be the first. But there was nobody to speak on their behalf. The point is that the son Parivar said, we'll dig up evidence. And that's how the case got derailed and is derailed before the Supreme Court today. Although the Supreme Court in this 1994 judgment said, nothing doing, we are not going into history. It is the suit in which a mosque was converted into a temple by the facing of idols. <coughs> the inevitable happened. These Muslim bodies, action committees and non-action committees split. Madhu Limal would have been very happy to see people emulate his example. And after that, the Muslim leaders didn't remain idle. They began a plea for reservations. That was as late as 1994. Then there was a movement for empowerment. Who would empower you? The people in power. The point is, if the people in power discriminate against you, why would they empower you? You could get the empowerment as a boom. Azadi. Azadi of the book, she made that. Anyway, give to the book. All those years were wasted. Uh, and this, I am coming to a part which may be controversial. Muslims didn't realize that Indian secularism was living on borrowed time. <coughs> Nehru was facing a majority. You will find it in the former secretary, Vaidhi Gondavia's book, Outside the Archives. He said, Sir, would you address the trainees of foreign service? So somebody said, at the time, the Kerala Mil Com uh, Communist Ministry had come to power, and somebody said, Communism. The Pandit is better, he said, Communism, Communism. The danger to India is not from Communism, it's from right wing Hindu fascism. He was a man who saw it. And the Muslims didn't. They didn't help Nehru, they didn't help themselves. Big market is that the years ago, oh no. Are you to mobilize Karo, Kudaka Bato? There were any number of Hindus or Christians and others who were a joint hand with them. Those years were wasted in my opinion. And then the Sun Paiva grew. So I don't need to describe it as it is today. And we are where we are today. Now, having taken me through all this dismal record, what are my suggestions? First and foremost, I would like to see an organization on the lines of NAACP of the United States. National Association for Advancement of Colored Peoples, which had Whites as well as blacks. If I had my way, if I were in public, I would have set it up, invited my Hindu friends, money and others, come on, and you be good friends and tell us when we go wrong. But this must be an Indian group, Arati Kakti Kakoti, which is concerned with the discrimination of Muslims. What a powerful body it would have. Secondly, I would have said documentation. I'm sorry, Mr. Mahas, I'm not good in research. Pamphlets, Karenge, Yaha, Kitalawa, take rights. I've yet to see a single compilation of rights since 61. Mr. Arbo, I'm very happy to see Mr. Vibhuti Nara. He's oh. done stupendous work, very noble work for Hakim Shura. Mr. Dr. John Dayan is here, he has done global work. But com complete the data and put it forward before I do friends. There's a lot of global state for Muslims. I practice law in a predominantly non-Muslim media in the Bombay High Court. And when I was put in the prison, in prison my little friends got together and said, 
will the petition for his release and we will not accept a single Muslim signature, so he will have no meaning. They didn't agree with my views, but they said, no, this is wrong. You have not tapped, Muslims have not tapped the reservoir of the world. Rats, employment, arrest, shall power spoke recently. What is the problem? The problem is that to deny discrimination, is to deny the truth. But there is a form of agitation which aggravates. I've heard many of my friends say, but what? Is it a crime to be born in There's a form of agitation which aggravates. Muslims must develop a form and context of agitation which heals old wounds, does not impose new ones. And that you can do only by secularizing the agitation. Include them, include them here. Thirdly, no political party is interested because the political party will come to power on the strength of the majority vote. You saw it in 1967, the Samyukta Vidal. They conceded Urdu as a second language as a coalition. Accept the realities. Don't push it too far. Above all, learn from others. And here I would say the Kurdish example in 2015. The Kurdish party in Turkey joined hands with the oppressed and they made a splendid show. They remained committed to them, but they expanded and the New York Times committed. Look at these people. I see no movement among Muslims to widen your horizons, to widen your approach. The, my last suggestion to Muslims is, please involve yourself in natural issues. I don't want to be personal, but as far as I can, I'm, I'm sorry I'm an economic illiterate, but as far as constitutional issues are concerned, issues of foreign policy are concerned, administrative issues are concerned, I gave myself to heart and I would like Muslims that like the elite, the poor vice chancellor of Aliba, Dr. Huh? No. The economist. First rate economist. We must then Dalit, but don't hang down with Dalits as a counter to the majority Hindu because you're making a big mistake. Nothing will succeed which is insincere. Take interest in matters of defense. Take interest in matters of administration. Above all, take interest in agriculture, economy, and in the small handicrafts in which Muslims are employed, especially in UP and Bihar. Do it in company here. Finally, I can say you that it is not isolation, it is involvement which provides the solution. And I can only recite the couplet which I learned when I was in jail. Ashya Banaunga Maya Bhare Shakta. Ashya Banaunga Maya Bhare Shakta. Kya Meri Zidme Bhagavad Sara Chaman Bataiga.